What's up, everybody? <laughs> it's your host, Joel, with another Mix It Up Reactions here with my buddy and good pal. It's Jones. <laughs> Thanks for being prompt with that one that time. Like, it's been a while <laughs> since you've done it prompt. Uh, so today we're going to be doing, well, it's by Rice Squad. It's, I always forget the title every single time. The Most Beautiful Life Goes On, a story of BTS 2023 update. So you guys requested this and uh, we're going to go ahead and watch it and you guys get to watch it with us. Now, this came out, it says 10 months ago. But if it was a 2023 update, I, yeah. I guess. How did they? How are they able to do that? How are they able to update the video? If this was released 10 months ago, you shouldn't be able to. I mean, I would update and fix a bunch of stuff on our videos if I could do that. How are they doing it? Um, oh, I go to the that's Google. That's not fair. If, <laughs> if that's what fair. it is, that is really not fair. Oh, I need to find out how they're doing that. <laughs> if y'all know how they're doing that, please let us know. Because it's a 2023 update. Ten months ago, it was 2022. So... How are they able to do a 2023 update and edit the video? Because in YouTube studio, they don't give you the option. You can take out stuff like take out a clip or whatever. If it's like unsanctioned or they're freaking out about it, mm -hmm. but you got to re upload the video and that's a whole new video. You don't get to keep your statistics. Yeah. Because you know? yeah. otherwise, if I did know how to do that, I'd fix all the weird tracking issues we had and sound <laughs> issues we had. I'd fix it. Can't fix the video stuff as much, but. Well, at least the videos where like you're distorted or I'm my camera angles, not there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just invisible. Mm -hmm. No, that was me. That was gone. You were fuzzy. Oh, I was missing. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but, uh, so we're going to be checking out the most beautiful life goes on a story of BT BTS. I love oh, it's on the screen. 2023 <laughs> update. I know I have problems with speech sometimes. <laughs> But uh, we're going to check it out. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when new videos are coming out. Um, check some links, buy some stuff. I don't know. Do whatever you want. We're about to launch the fourth wall. So you'll be able to donate to the channel just to, you know, hey, here you go, blah, blah, blah. And you'll get discounts on merch and stuff like that, which we're going to launch a bunch of stuff. And we're trying to get approved by Amazon to put stuff on there, too. So uh yeah guys we're 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 up and coming man. Oh, and don't forget to check out it was supposed to be coming out tomorrow but I think we're going to release this episode tomorrow. Cuz we're we're we've got a lot backlined but I think we're going to wait and hold off on some of those <laughs> just because uh, if we have like 15 videos of BTS or you know in a row it's going to be cool for y'all but it's going to be crappy for everybody else who's requested things to <laughs> play more XO, play more XG, play more 21. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah. Uh, other than that, we're going to be checking out this and uh, let's go ahead and watch. Cause it's a long thing and it's by rice squad. So more props to your rice squad, which you did change the name of the channel. I think that's what you're about to tell us. Probably. Let's watch. First things first, a big announcement and a change to the channel. We are rebranding. The era of the Asian theory is over. We are pleased to announce the new channel name. Wait for it. Rice Squad. I was right. <laughs> we believe this name more strongly represents our brand and who we are as a channel.
this video, we've partnered up with Vapor95. Vapor95 is an LA-based company that makes really cool aesthetic clothing. Today, everyone knows the name of BTS. They've been invited onto late night talk shows, they've shattered records, they've sold out stadiums, they've made it onto the big screen. These days, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who didn't know who these guys were or haven't heard at least one of their songs. And if they don't, either they've been living under a rock or they're 100 years old. The success of the Bang Tan Boys is worldwide, but it wasn't always like this. The very existence of BTS can be owed to its founding father, an innovator by the name of Hitman Bang. His idea to create a rap group was somewhat inspired by YG. In the late 90s, he experimented with this idea with different trainees, eventually choosing seven members. And while three of them eventually left, the remaining four, Teddy, Danny, Jinhwan, and Baekhyung, debuted in 1998 as One Time. Their first album, titled One Time For Your Mind, it was one of the year's best-selling albums and won several awards, including the Global Disc and SBS Music Awards for Best New Artist and KMTV's Award for Best Hip Hop Artist. The group enjoyed moderate success and released four more albums before going on indefinite hiatus in 2006 due to their mandatory military service. The year was 2010, and the five-year-old company Big Hit Entertainment had previously signed two artists, 88 and 2AM. They had their share of successes, but they were very traditional K-pop groups. Big Hit wanted a fresh new sound, and upon listening to One Time, CEO hitman Bang Si Hyuk had decided that that was the sound that he had been looking for. And on top of that, the youth needed someone to relate to, but more importantly, to look up to. He decided that he would create a hip-hop group. <laughs> At 15 years old, Kim Namjoon auditioned for a certain Big Deal Records, which he completely botched, forgetting the lyrics to the song he was performing. Afterwards, fellow rapper Sleepy recommended that he try auditioning at another label, Big Hit, and even put in a good word for him to one of the producers there. At age 16, Namjoon auditioned in front of Bang Si Hyuk himself, and instantly impressed him. He was offered to deal with Big Hit on the spot, which Namjoon accepted and became a trainee, officially choosing a name for himself, Rap Monster, destined to become the leader of the newly created group. Now that a fearless leader was chosen, they needed more members. Min Young Gi was a 17 year old living in Daegu, an avid basketball player and rapper. He had been interested in music, especially rap, from a very early age, and despite his parents' disapproval, started performing as a rapper while still in high school. He quickly gained attention as a rapper and producer in the underground hip hop scene. One day he saw a flyer for a rap competition called Hit It and decided to participate. And although he only placed second, the company hosting the competition, you guessed it, Big Hit, decided to sign him on as a producer. Hitman Bang spoke with him afterwards, convincing him to join a newly created hip hop group. He told him to just focus on rapping and assured him that he wouldn't need to dance. He was lying. And just like that, the new group had a second <laughs> member, known as Sugar, a combination of the first two syllables of shooting guard, his favorite position in basketball. But they wouldn't stop there. Rappers were nice, but Big Hit actually needed a dancer. Jung Ho Sok always loved dancing. He was in the starting lineup of the dance crew Neuron in his hometown, Gwangju. He was good at it too, winning several local championships and even winning a championship at the national level in 2008. While he did perform at several competitions hosted by JYP and even won some of them, he ultimately went on to audition for a smaller, lesser known company. Big Hit Entertainment. His dance skills and strong understanding of rhythm made him an instant favorite, and he was signed on as J-Hope. Not only that, but they saw potential in him to become a rapper, which at this point he had little experience with. However, J-Hope made the decision to leave Big Hit until RM convinced both J-Hope and Big Hit that the group wouldn't be complete without him. He was right. <laughs> With the addition of J-Hope, the rap line was complete. Now they needed some singers. Now, just like how RM, an amazing rapper with a ton of experience, was chosen as the first official member of the rap line, it would only make sense that a legendary singer and dancer would be the perfect first member of the vocal line. Right? <laughs> but Kim Seok Jin didn't have any sort of experience like that. 
Believe it or not, one day when he was walking on the streets of his hometown, Anyang, he was approached by a representative of SM Entertainment with an offer to work for the company. In typical Jin fashion, he never followed up with them because he believed it to be a scam. Apparently, Jin was a very good looking guy because years later, this time as a college student in Seoul, he was once again approached on the street, this time by an executive at Big Hit Entertainment. He didn't sing, he didn't dance. He was at school to become an actor, and he decided to audition to become an actor. Big Hit, however, had different plans for him, and convinced him to become a vocalist for their new group. To do so, he literally learned to dance and sing starting from zero, but thankfully, not without help from other vocalists. John Jung Cook initially had dreams of becoming a badminton player when he was young, but after seeing G-Dragon perform Heartbreaker on television, it influenced him to want to become a singer instead. Because of this, at only age 14, he decided to audition for the South Korean talent show Superstar K. He didn't pass auditions, but this was just enough to catch the eye of not one company, not two companies, but seven different companies. This included JYP, FNC, Woolum, Starship Entertainment, TS, Cube, and of course, Big Hit Entertainment. So why did Jungkook, given the choice of all these bigger companies, decide to go with the relatively smaller company, Big Hit? The answer was simple, because he thought, and I quote, RM was cool, so I wanted to sign him. <laughs> that brings the number of members to five. The next member of BTS was just as surprised to find Big Hit as Big Hit was to find him, and it almost didn't happen. Kim Taehyung was always passionate about music, and it was always his dream to pursue it as a career. However, it was hard, as his family was poor, his parents being humble farmers. His father told him that if he was passionate about music, he should learn an instrument, and he did, spending three years practicing with the saxophone. One day, one of his friends decided to audition for Big Hit Entertainment when they were holding auditions in his hometown of Daegu. Taehyung, being a good friend, came with him to keep him company, but when one of the team members in charge of the audition saw Taehyung, he encouraged him to audition as well. With nothing to lose, he did. That day, he was the only one in Daegu to move on to the next round of auditions, and eventually became a trainee for Big Hit Entertainment. They decided to keep him as a surprise member, and didn't want to reveal him as one of the members until his debut. In the same vein, Big Hit had him choose something mysterious for his stage name. He decided to go with V for victory. Here seems like a nice round number to stop, right? Six members for a new hip-hop group, three rappers, and three vocalists. It seems like a complete group, but still there was something missing. Some one was missing. Someone that could take this already great group of artists and push it even further to achieve perfection. A powerhouse. Someone so naturally talented that they could stand out in a room full of already talented artists. This project that Big Hit had embarked upon needed a capstone. Park Jimin was a naturally talented dancer. When he was in middle school, he attended a dance academy and continued to pursue dance at Busan High School of Arts, where he studied contemporary dance and was the top student in the whole modern dance department. Impressed by his raw talent, a teacher encouraged him to audition for Big Hit Entertainment, who were holding auditions in Busan. He was only 16 when he passed the audition and moved to Seoul to become a trainee. He was the final member of the group, and he also had the shortest training period. Interesting to note is that the group feels very much ragtag because, in a sense, with the exception of Jimin and J-Hope, it was. RM auditioned for Big Hit because he didn't pass his auditions with the first company he chose. And despite their amazing talent, Suga and Jungkook didn't win the competitions they were in, but they signed on with Big Hit after the fact because of their high quality performances. V never even planned on auditioning, but just decided to do it on a whim, and Jin, they, they literally just found Jin on the streets. But <laughs> perhaps it was fate. This was the group that they chose. And just like that, in 2012, the newly created Bang Dan Son Yandan, the Bulletproof Boy Scouts, or simply BTS, was set. They had the group, but they still needed the music. In early 2013, they set out to create some social media presence for themselves before officially debuting, posting song covers on both SoundCloud and YouTube, which you can still go watch today. In May, Big Hit launched a countdown clock on their website in preparation for BTS's debut album, complete with a trailer and a ton of promotional material, including photos for the first time of all the members in the official lineup. Finally, the big day came. June 12, 2013, BTS held a press conference and a debut showcase where they performed their two singles, No More Dream 
and We Are Bulletproof Part 2. The same day, the Too Cool For School album, as well as the music video for No More Dream, were released. The very next day, BTS performed the song again on their official debut stage on Mnet's M Countdown. This was the world's first taste of BTS. Commercially, the album didn't do extraordinarily well. The lead single, No More Dream, peaked at 124 in Korea, and the album sold only 24,000 copies during its first year. Bulletproof Part 2 didn't wow. even chart. The first year wasn't all that great for BTS, but despite everything, people saw them. People saw the sparkle in their eyes and their <laughs> limitless potential. And they were hot, of course. On July 9th, ARMY was established as BTS's official fandom. They made their comeback only two months later in September, when they released their single, No, along with their EP, part two of what would be their school trilogy, Oh Are You Late 2. In the music video for the single, they made a commentary on the harsh Korean education system, along with their previous themes of hopes and dreams. No peaked at 92 in Korea, but also quickly fell off the charts. The album debuted at number 4 on the Gaon Weekly chart, and was the 55th best-selling album in South Korea that year. This was enough to secure them the coveted New Artist of the Year Award at the Melon Music Awards, the Golden Disc Awards, and the Soul Music Awards. Part 3 of the School Trilogy was released in February of 2014, the EP School Love Affair. This time, the lead single was Boy in Love. <laughs> and the other single being Just One Day. The album, as well as both singles, enjoyed moderate success, with the album topping the Gaon album chart, as well as making its first international appearance at number 3 on the Billboard World Albums chart. The album also marked their first distinctive change in theme, focusing more on school life and young love, as evidenced by their Boy In Love music video. They also held their first fan meetings with a crowd of 3,000 in Seoul. BTS was doing well, that is until July. This is unfortunately a dark chapter in the lives of BTS and ARMY. That's right, American Hustle Life. I'm joking, of course, but American Hustle Life was a reality show put together by Mnet that brought BTS to Los Angeles where they had the unique opportunity to learn the true ways of hip-hop from the masters. And it was a pretty darn cringy opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless. But whatever you do, just don't watch the Warren G version of Boy In Love, you've been warned. However, cringe and all, the trip proved fruitful for BTS, making connections, performing their first US concert for free in front of 200 fans, as well as their first appearance at KCON. The next month, in August, BTS released their first full-length studio album, Dark and Wild. The album featured two singles, Danger and War of Hormones. The album featured a marked shift in sound with a touch of R&B and electronica. It was met with moderate success. It peaked at number 2 in Korea, selling over 200,000 albums. In October, and again in May of the following year, BTS won on their first and second concert tours, known as the Red Bullet Tour, where they visited 13 different countries, including Japan, the Philippines, Australia, the US, Mexico, and many others. They also came out with their first Japanese album in December, Wake Up, featuring many Japanese versions of their songs as well as original tracks Wake up and the stars, followed by a Japan tour and a solo concert in Korea. Although Dark and Wild got decent attention, they needed something different. They needed something that would shake things up. They got to work. April 29, 2015 was their comeback. When this album was produced, each member had a hand in writing songs for the album. They again changed their sound, from aggressive hip-hop to youthful colorful styles. And not only their sound, but their image as well. This can be evidenced by their newest EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life. And just by looking at the album cover, they ditched the dark colors and the bulletproof vest symbol that had become so synonymous with BTS, and replaced it with a simple white and pink background overlaid with the title. And then, they dropped the single that would change everything. I Need You. I need you it was sentimental, it was hopeful, it was new. Just by looking at the music video, we can see that BTS has also ditched their punk bad boy image and replaced it with a more real, vulnerable, down-to-earth, and youthful feel. This proved to be the change that BTS needed for mainstream success. Billboard called it one of the greatest K-pop songs of the decade. It charted at number 5 in Korea, and even led them to their first music show win on SBS MTV's The Show. And that wasn't all, they released their second single, Dope, 
on June 24th, which started off with a poignant line from RM. Hmm. Oso wa. Bangtan is the first time. Welcome. Is this your first time with BTS? And you know what? For a lot of people, it was. In a way, their first studio album and tour can be seen as their stepping stone between old school BTS and new school. In November, they came back with their follow-up EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 2, the second EP in what would be dubbed the Youth Trilogy, which featured the single Run. The album focused even more on the frivolity, friendship, and carefree attitude that comes with enjoying one's youth, but just like in I Need You, contrasted that with suffering, depression, loneliness, society, and the stark and sometimes dark reality of life. Compare this with the far cry of the No More Dreams music video. It felt real. It was darker, grittier, more humble, more meaningful, and most importantly, RM lost his mohawk. Run also connected narratively with their previous <laughs> single, I Need You, and another video released in September titled On Stage Prologue established what would come to be known as the BTS Universe, or the BU, <laughs> which would eventually combine music videos, short films, books, short stories, webtoons, and even a mobile game to create a cohesive story. Wow. And I won't yeah. go down this rabbit hole because there is a lot to digest, but it's definitely something to look into if you're so a hardcore much. army. The same month, they kicked off their third tour, the most beautiful moment in life on stage tour where they performed songs from their two recent EPs, part one and part two. And part two was a hit, their biggest so far. It topped the weekly Gaon album and Billboard World Albums charts. And on Billboard, it stayed there for multiple weeks, the first K-pop act to do so. It also appeared on the Billboard 200 albums chart, not world albums, which is reserved for foreign non-English songs, but simply the top 200 albums, peaking at 171 which is kind of amazing considering that this was back in 2015. They also received Best World Performer at the 17th Mnet Asian Music Awards. This brings us to part three of the Youth Trilogy, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever, released on May 2nd, 2016, which featured probably my favorite BTS album cover. Young Forever was actually a compilation album of parts one and two, so it was mostly the same songs, but it was notable that it had some new singles, Epilogue, Young Forever, Fire, and Save Me. The latter two performed exceptionally well, with both songs topping the Billboard World Digital Songs chart. This was also the second BTS album to chart on the Billboard 200 at 107, and it topped both the Gaon Weekly and Monthly chart, which earned BTS their first <laughs> Album of the Year at the 8th Melon Music Awards. They went on to do the second half good. of their tour, the most yeah. beautiful moment in life on stage epilogue, selling out many of their concerts and even selling out KCON in the US where they headlined the event. In September, they dropped their second Japanese album, Youth, featuring Japanese versions of tracks from their previous three EPs. Which went gold and peaked at number one on Japanese charts. And only a month later, in October of 2016, it happened. BTS dropped their second studio album, Wings. It sold over 500,000 copies in its first week. In wow. comparison, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 1, released just the previous year, which topped the gown chart, sold about 500,000 in its entire lifetime. Wings wow. was big, but the true showstopper was its lead single, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. <laughs> which got them their first all-kill, topping eight music charts in South Korea. Its music video gained 6 million views in the first 24 hours, which broke hmm. the YouTube record for the highest number of views That's the next of a one we gotta see. music video <laughs> within 24 hours. The album hit number 26 on the Billboard 200, the highest ever charting K-pop album on Billboard. They ended up selling 1.5 million copies in South Korea in 2016 alone, and it netted Man. them the Artist of the Year Award at the Mnet Asian Music Awards that same year, the first non big three artists ever to receive that award. <laughs> After Blood, Sweat, and Tears, they were on a roll. BTS was unstoppable. In February of 2017, they released the instant hit Spring Day, which, quoting a Korean reviewer, embodied nostalgia and sorrow and opened a new chapter in BTS's aesthetics and lyricism and attracted fans across generational boundaries. 
which by the way is still on Korean charts after nearly four years and the same day I'm writing this it ranked number 53 on Melon. It wow. won Song of the Year at the 9th Melon Music Awards. <laughs> after the release of Spring Day they went on yet another tour the 2017 BTS Live Trilogy Episode 3 The Wings Tour. The tickets sold out within minutes including in the United States the first K-pop artist to do so and went on to win Best Social Artist at the Billboard Music Awards. The first for a Korean artist, but they would go on to win this award four years in a row. The next year was a period of massive growth for both the group's popularity as well as their style. They released the Love Yourself series starting with Love Yourself Her in September of 2017, Love Yourself Tear in May of 2018, and Love Yourself Answer in August of 2018. Three albums that gave us some of the most classic BTS songs that we know and love today, such as Mic Drop, Fake Love, Euphoria, you love that one. <laughs> Trinity still sings Idol. that in the house. You know. <laughs> and of course, All three albums were commercial successes, Her being their first album to top 2 million album sales, but Tear and Answer also did equally well. These three albums, as well as their Japanese album, Face Yourself, proved that they weren't done yet, not even close. During this time, they shattered countless records, their singles went platinum, they topped charts, they won awards, and not only did they break YouTube records, but they broke records that they themselves set again and again <laughs> and again. This That's is the impressive. period where BTS really started enjoying global recognition, working with huge Western artists such as Nicki Minaj, Designer, and Steve Aoki. It wasn't their first time having international features on their songs, but it was definitely the biggest. And even though they were already, without a doubt, the biggest act to ever come out of South Korea, they had their eyes set even higher. They went on tour once again for the Love Yourself World Tour. During this tour, they collaborated with Steve Aoki to make the song, Wasted On Me. Wasted on me, wasted on me. Notable for being their first all English feature. And it also served as a jumping off point for BTS to gain a following of English speakers. Not that they really needed the help, as they sold out concerts even in the US leg of the tour, including at City Field in Queens, New York, where tickets sold out in 20 minutes. Holy and crap. as if that wasn't enough, they dropped the movie in November, burned the stage, which in the US alone grossed 3.54 million in the first weekend, breaking the record set by One Direction's movie, This Is Us. Maybe we in need September, to RM that. had the unique opportunity to speak at the United Nations, where he spoke of anti-violence and self-love. Two years later, he would be offered to speak on a second occasion about persistence and hope in the face of challenges. And to top it all off, in October, the president of South Korea awarded every member of BTS the 5th class Hongwon Order of Cultural Merit for outstanding meritorious services in the field of culture and art, which is one of the highest South Korean orders of merit one can receive. And that's no exaggeration. 2019 estimates put BTS's contribution to the South Korean economy to the tune of $4.65 billion Holy each year, and equivalent to 0.3% of the country's GDP. Wow. They were the youngest to ever receive the honor. 2019, BTS invited to the Grammys, Time Magazine, Billboard. BTS entered a new era. Not an era of simply global recognition, but global dominance. April 12, 2019, enter Map of the Soul Persona. First things first, you can't mention Map of the Soul Persona without mentioning Boy With Love. It was simple math. What do you get when you cross the singer of one of the best charting songs of all time that went platinum 59 times in 13 different countries with, without a question, the most globally dominant pop group of all time? Well, you get this. Nothing less than an instant hit. Number 8 on Billboard Hot 100. Platinum in the US. 21 music show wins. Number 1 on iTunes in 67 different countries. The most liked and the most viewed YouTube video in the first 24 hours. The fastest video to reach 100 million views. A current view count wow. of over 1 billion views. 7 boys, 1 girl, and 7 different hair colors. They were the talk <laughs> of the town, invited to talk show after talk show after talk show. The second single on the album was Make It Right. Oh, I can make it right. 
written by Ed Sheeran himself, including a version featuring Lau. The album debuted at number one on Gaon and sold 3.2 million copies its Holy first crap. month, and that's only in Korea. It became the best-selling album in South Korea ever. It swept every major Korean music show, winning album of the year in each one of them. They followed up this legendary EP with the Love Yourself, Speak Yourself world tour, where they sold out both the Rose Bowl and the Wembley Stadium in only an hour, the only non-English speaking act to do so. They even performed as a solo act in Saudi Arabia, the first foreign act to do that. Wow. The last stop of their tour was at South Korea's largest venue, the Seoul Olympic Stadium. They ended up grossing $200 million. During this time, they also created a visual novel style game for mobile devices called BTS <laughs> World, where the player can That's interact insane. with the members. This also came with an original soundtrack with tracks unique to the game featuring wow. the artist. Zara Larson, Charlie XCX, and Juice World for the tracks A Brand New Day, Dream Glow, and All Night, respectively. In December of 2019, the group swept the grand prizes for both the Melon and Mnet Music Award shows, the first artist to do that. <clears throat> Map of the Soul persona was legendary, truly a marvel in modern music. So how can BTS follow up the best-selling album in South Korean history, you might ask? It's Easy. a funny commercial. Make an even better-selling album. And that's what they did with Map of the Soul 7. The album was released on February 21st of 2020, featuring the singles Black Swan and On. And sold over 4.1 million albums in just the first week. And the first Korean album to be certified as Quadruple Million on the Gaon Music Chart. It debuted at number one on music charts all over the world, including the US, Korea, the UK, Japan, and much of Europe. It's not an exaggeration to say that this album left a permanent mark on the world, launching BTS wow. into legendary status and becoming the best selling artist in South Korean history. BTS had scheduled a Map of the Soul tour for April of that year, which would have undoubtedly outsold their record-breaking tour only a year prior. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic caused the entire tour to be postponed, including the show at the Rose Bowl, which I was supposed to attend. But that didn't stop BTS, who performed virtual concerts, spoke at the Dear Class of 2020 graduation event, and released the Japanese version of their recent album with an original Japanese single, Stay Gold. Stay Gold! <laughs> And to top it all off, this was only June. At this point, it was clear that BTS had already dominated their home turf, and they had topped the music charts all over the world. This time, their sight was set for the very top. Remember that scene in The Social Network, where Mark and Sean talk about how they don't want a million dollars, they want a billion dollars. How they're not interested in catching 14 trout, but they'd rather catch an 800 pound marlin? Well, that's what they set their sights on. The marlin. The biggest music industry in the world. The United States. And at the top of that music industry, number one on Billboard Hot 100. This small group from a company that virtually no one had heard about eight years ago planned to take on <laughs> Goliath himself and dominate the American industry on their home turf. And all they had to do was speak English. August 21st, enter <laughs> Dynamite. Because um, yeah. that's the first thing I ever heard from. Yeah. I Their first they were. English single simultaneously performed better than anyone had expected, but at the same time is exactly what we as an audience had come to expect from the legendary boy band themselves. And they did it. They reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100, the Global 200, and the Global Excluding US chart. And they made sure that if you hadn't heard of them before, you definitely have now. And if that wasn't already the biggest flex. On October 2nd, they came out with Savage Love BTS Remix with Jason Rulo. Savage Love getting number one on the Billboard Hot 100 again, less than two months after already getting at number one with Dynamite, and on the Global 200, where they actually replaced themselves at number one, the first <laughs> artist to do so ever. And this is where we stopped in the original video, October of 2020. So what's happened since then? Well, not much. On November 20th, their fifth studio album, B, was released, featuring the hit single, Life Goes On. B was met with critical acclaim and hit number one on Billboard 200 and the World Albums Chart, the fifth BTS album to do so, along with topping worldwide charts in countries like Belgium, Canada, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, and of course, their hometown, South Korea. And in spite of all these accolades, perhaps the biggest winner was Life Goes On. 
a synth-pop showstopper encouraging its audience to continue living life even in the midst of a global pandemic. The message was clear, don't give up, life goes on. It hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, the third BTS song to do so. BTS gave the fans what they wanted with Life Goes On. Life Goes On joined the exclusive club of only eight songs to ever top the Billboard Hot 100 that were not in English, a title most recently held by Despacito. But it was the first to do it in BTS's native tongue, Korean. Leap of Bad Bunny and Tiny, Intentions by Justin Bieber and Koivo, uh, Dynamite by BTS, yeah! Rain On Me. The same month, the Academy announced that BTS's Dynamite would be nominated for the Best Pop Duo Group Performance, along with songs by J Balvin, Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, and Taylor Swift. This marked the first time a Korean pop artist was nominated for a Grammy. In December, BTS was invited to sing for Disney's holiday sing-along. And on New Year's Eve, Big Hit put on a New Year's concert where they performed again. Things looked really good for BTS and their Grammy nomination, especially since on March 4th, 2021, the official news came. The International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, or IFPI, announced BTS as the Global Recording Artist of the Year, an award given to the best-selling artist of 2020, period, beating out nine other prominent Western artists, making them the first artist from Korea, but perhaps more importantly, the first non-English artist to do so. Later that month, the Grammys, the main event that everyone was waiting for, finally arrived. With bated breath, BTS and the world watched. And, well... And the Grammy goes to... Rain On Me, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande. <laughs> they didn't win. However, they made history for being the first South Korean artist to perform at the Grammys, after presenting at the Grammys the year prior. March 31st, 2021, Big Hit Entertainment officially rebrands as HYBE and completely revamps their organization. BTS now falls under Big Hit Music, which is now a subsidiary of HYBE Labels, a division of the HYBE Corporation. Two days later, HYBE acquires Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings. Scooter Braun Projects is a subsidiary of Ithaca Holdings that manages several artists, including Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, Jay Balvin, Carly Rae Jepsen, Black Eyed Peas, Demi Lovato, and others, which means that those artists are now part of the same family as BTS. Then, at long last, BTS announced their highly anticipated follow-up single to their smash English hit, Dynamite. And that single was Butter. <laughs> May 21st, 2021. Smooth like butter, like criminal undercover. Don't they have so many song hooks that are the retro summer pop in my head. immediate success and universal praise. Butter was yet another number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and once again topped the charts around the world. Not only that, but it had 3.9 million viewers at its premiere, which Holy broke crap, the man. previous record held by Dynamite. It also broke the record for fastest YouTube video to reach 10 million views and 100 million views. Wow. Both also That's previously like 13 held by minutes. Dynamite. It was the most viewed music video on YouTube in the first 24 That's hours, with 108.2 million views. Wow. Once again, surpassing the 101.1 .1 million views set by Dynamite. And finally, Man. at 11 million streams on its first day on Spotify, it once again set a new wow. world record. And as an amazing gesture, RM makes a shout out to BTS's fans, ARMY, who helped them get to where they are today. All of this is to say, it was really big. <laughs> Their new single broke streaming records on Spotify and YouTube. Um obsessed with this song is really really amazing i mean what is the inspiration behind the new song butter and butter 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's Stephen what about butter eventually became billboard's longest running number one song of 2021 wow spending 10 weeks atop the chart beating out olivia rodrigo's driver's license yeah we're here for the bts a drink and fries uh. Chicken McNuggets. And one more thing. Mm. Two more things. Sweet chili sauce and cage. On May 26, the BTS meal launched. Yeah, the BTS meal at McDonald's. Yeah, that happened. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. June 16th, Smart. BTS releases their third Japanese compilation album known as BTS The Best. It instantly hit number one on Japan's Oricon chart and sold over one million albums, the first and only Korean boy group so far to accomplish this feat. The new Japanese single, Film Out, was released two months earlier and debuted at number one on the Oricon chart. 
And as an interesting fact, charted at 185 on the Billboard 200, excluding US chart. Joining Dynamite and Life Goes On, making BTS the only artist to ever have three songs in three different languages on the Billboard 200. Damn, on July wow, 1st, that following is crazy. an organizational restructuring, the Hype Corporation announced that Hitman Bang, our same Hitman Bang who got the boys together, resigned as CEO of the company in order to focus on his passion for music production. And while he is still the chairman of the board of directors, he was replaced as CEO by Pak Ji Won. On July 7th, BTS became official models for Louis Vuitton as they walked the runway for part of their men's fall winter 2021 collection. They were named as ambassadors only two months prior. And then for their teaser trailer, they forgot to put V in the video. <laughs> and finally, that brings us to July 9th, Permission to Dance. The hit song, which was written by Ed Sheeran, spreads positive vibes as the world starts to recover from the global pandemic. Its YouTube debut saw 72.3 million views in the first 24 hours, placing itself at number 6 of the top 10 most viewed music videos in the first 24 hours. Out of BTS's past 5 singles, 3 of them have been fully in English. And while this trend has been concerning for some fans who have been wanting more traditional Korean pop songs, there's no denying that BTS has enjoyed global recognition like no other international and particularly non-English group before them. And that itself is a sign of success that can't be ignored. And as a fun fact, there's a line in the song referencing legendary singer-songwriter Elton John. When it all seems like strong, sing along to Elton John and to that feel. He gave the song his personal approval. <laughs> That same month, BTS once again tops the Billboard Hot 100 with Permission to Dance, marking number 5 of BTS singles that have topped the Billboard Hot 100. In August, Big Hit officially cancels the Map of the Soul tour due to the pandemic, but to everyone's surprise, only a month later they announced the Permission to Dance on stage tour being their first live concert since 2019. The tour kicked off with a concert in Seoul in October, but later announced dates for Los Angeles in November and December. Barely two months after their previous number one hit, BTS collaborates with legendary British rock band Coldplay to drop yet another number one hit on Billboard's Hot 100 with My Universe. Never ending forever, baby. In November, BTS wins Artist of the Year at the American Music Awards. The American Music Award goes to... A BTS! Not only were they the first K-pop group to ever win the award, but they were the first Asian act ever to win that award. Next, we have Best Pop Duo or Group Performances. The nominees are Butter by BTS. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> The same week, they were nominated for a Grammy for Best Pop Group Performance. From November 27th to December 2nd, BTS held its first international concert since 2019 in Los Angeles, California, the Permission to Dance onstage tour. And, well, it was insane. They were to perform at the SoFi Stadium, one of the largest stadiums Holy in the crap. United States. And coincidentally, it would be the same stadium that held the Super Bowl. Pre-sales started October 5th for those who bought VIP soundcheck tickets. And though ticket sales for the general public were supposed to start on October 9th, they ended up selling out before it even started. Demand for the <laughs> tickets were so high that scalpers were reselling tickets for up to $40,000. Holy Thankfully, crap! Thankfully, we were one of the lucky ones, and we were able to snag a few tickets and finally see them in person. Ladies and gentlemen, so we got them. It felt like a farewell concert and it really was supposed to be with the uncertainty about the future of the world, as well as Jin's enlistment looming over the group's head, but thanks to recently passed South Korean legislation known colloquially as the BTS law, the group had been granted a postponement on their mandatory military service until wow. further notice. And just to show that they weren't done yet, only two months later, tour dates were added for April 8th, 9th, 15th, and 16th in Las Vegas, Nevada. On December 6th, 2021, BTS surprised their fans as they launched individual Instagram accounts for the first time ever. In doing so, V broke the record for the fastest time to reach 1 million followers on Instagram in just 43 minutes. And then he also achieved the fastest time to reach 10 million followers after only 4 hours and 15 wow. minutes. The same day, the group announced that they were suspending activities in order to take an extended period of rest so that they could spend more time with their family. And this Makes is sense. crazy. This is only their second break that they've ever taken. 
since their debut in 2013, which is just such a testament of how hard they actually work. The break was definitely well deserved. <laughs> On December 11th, BTS swept the Mnet Asian Music Awards, winning all four Daesongs. This marks the third consecutive year that BTS has swept the awards, showing no signs of slowing down in their home country. In February, BTS won IFPI's Best Selling Artist of the Year award for the second time in a row, the only artist ever to do so, and only the third artist to win more than once, along with Taylor Swift and Drake. Impressive considering how new BTS is on the international stage compared to the others. On March 25th, Snoop Dogg officially confirms an upcoming collaboration with BTS that he had been hinting at since January of the same year. Funny enough, he admits that he didn't know at the time exactly how big they were. You get calls from, from the biggest artists in the world. I got a group named BTS that's waiting on me to do a song with them right now, and I'm trying to figure out if I got time to do this. Regardless, <laughs> it's nice to see BTS revisit their hip hop roots every now and then. And that brings us to today. Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. BTS had been previously nominated for the Grammys once before, and even then they were by far the most accomplished and critically acclaimed artists in their category, and they didn't win. Unfortunately, history repeated itself, and they once again were snubbed of the trophy. Some might regard this as a huge loss, a huge blow to BTS and their fans, Sure, some might say that they missed out on the most prestigious music award the world can give, right? I'd argue, no, not really. I'm sure if they had one, ARMY around the world would celebrate as BTS wins against all odds in a rigged award show skewed towards American English-speaking songs. But the truth is, they never needed to win an award to garner any sort of praise. They don't need a trophy to be validated. They were able to do that all on their own. Boy bands come and go, but BTS continues to prove themselves by pushing the envelope, pushing themselves to the limit. BTS sets new records, they smash decade-long records, and then they replace themselves by breaking their own records by the very next thing that they do. That's just what BTS does. From humble beginnings in their old studio dance practice room to selling out the world's largest stadiums, these seven boys have crawled their way up to the top thanks to their own blood, sweat, and tears. They dominate a world that 10 years ago would have been unthinkable for any Asian group. Even five years ago, the majority of people you'd meet wouldn't have listened to K-pop or even heard of K-pop. In the past year, their popularity has grown so much that we often forget how groundbreaking they are as a group. and how much progress they've made in such little time on the world stage, not only for themselves, but for Korean and Asian representation for a whole. From the early days of their first fan meetings to today, a staggering 41 million members of ARMY have been with them, some since the beginning, but others joining along the way. Each one of us started following them because of one of their songs that spoke to us, or maybe it was something that they said, or their amazing talents that spoke for themselves, or maybe it's something they stood for, or maybe, maybe you just think they're hot and that's fine too. Regardless of the reason you initially started following them, the important thing is that you're here for it, and that you're along for the ride, and that you continue to find beauty in the things that they do, because according to the group themselves, they chose the theme for their album, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, because in life, beauty coexists with uncertainty. And even in uncertain times like ours, we can find that beauty. And with all their talent, the members of BTS really could have chosen to do so many other things, but they chose to share some of that beauty with us. And I'm grateful for that. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. And that's our April 2022 update. There's been lots of crazy things happening recently, and I'm excited to see what the rest of 2022 has in store for the group and for all of us. Thank you to everyone who's been watching our videos. We're always looking to improve our videos, so if you find something that needs improving, leave a comment below. And remember, this video was made possible by Vapor95. Use our link in the description to get 15% off your order. And a big shout out for our over 180,000 subscribers. That's insane. You guys are the best. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> they made it look kind of like the more you know type thing. Mm -hmm. That's genius. I like that.
Okay, so that was long. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely long. But uh yeah, okay, so yeah, dude. Okay, AMAs, impressive. Mm-hmm. Definitely impressive. All all the awards they've won and albums they've sold. But just some of those social media markers and points where it was like breaking world records, beating their own world records within minutes. minutes. Like that's insane, dude. (laughs) Think about with with that many people online at the same time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like right now, something's going online. We don't know about it because we're recording something. Yeah. And there's that many people. There's like, oh, no, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, it's okay. So like, uh. I'm glad he explained a little bit more in detail, like what albums and everything, because mm. it is very hard looking through like the entire playlist of like Hive and everything else. Because YouTube is not exactly the best and cleanest, easiest way to organize everything, you know? So it's sometimes you have to dig and look through and scroll through mm. a crap ton of videos to find what you're looking for, or to find where you might be. And sometimes you get performance pieces that look like music videos and you get yeah. confused. And <sighs> anyways, but of course you guys helped us out by saying MV means music video. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why it didn't dawn on me from the get go, but um, no, like it was nice seeing it. Cause we, we saw the, the, uh, the guide to the members Mm. of BTS. And we saw that and that explained more like their origin points of where they came from and everything else, but it didn't really go into too much detail. Like what was happening in the past five or six years, Yeah, which this one did way more detail on that end. So uh, I'm impressed by the amount of songs they put out when they said, when, when he said, uh, when rice squad said, uh, you know, the second that's the second break they've taken since 2013. I'm like, I'm surprised. <laughs> no, I'm not. Because the amount of stuff they put out, because mm-hmm. they were talking about mobile apps, TV yeah. shows, game yeah. shows, <laughs> social media stuff, showing songs online, releasing albums, performance in, pieces, shows, and tours, re recording in other languages as well, and re recording albums and songs in other and languages, videos. and putting new songs yeah. on those albums too. Yeah. Come on now. That's that's a lot of work. We're musicians. We know on the low scale what it is. <laughs> so the amount of crap that they're doing would make you and me look like we're missing legs and arms and hands <laughs> and mouths. Like wow, it's just it's impressive. It's impressive. Now, I will say about the the Grammy Awards thing and stuff like that. Here's my th- here's my thought on that. One uh, I've never cared about awards or anything else like that. Like that's never been like, there's four motivations that I've said many times before. There's, you know, the artistry, which they're about that, mm-hmm. the money. Well, of course they like making money, but that's not their motivation. Uh, the attention and fame, uh, in a way, but not really. We all like to be individuals. They're not starved for attention. Mm-hmm. You know, they just want to create something and showcase it. You can tell by the way they react to things and the way they talk. They're not about uh, being obsessed with people loving them. They just appreciate people and their fans and stuff yeah. like that, which is cool. But uh, and then the fourth motivation is validation. I don't think they're about that validation either. Mm. I think at most they might be a little bit sad here and there. Like you said, like the minute they didn't win the first time they were like, Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, let's hug, let's hug. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's really kind and nice and understanding because I'll tell you right now is that Grammys, Oscars, most of the award shows that exist in the world, they're just voted on by people. It's money based it's not based actually on talent yeah but i will say this though i don't like the term snubbed Mm -hmm. because you don't win doesn't mean it's a snub Mm -hmm. like it wasn't like oh because you're this we don't like you and you're not gonna win that has nothing to do with it right right. it's based on money it's based purely on that uh anybody who says oh well you know it's a i'm telling you right now is a long time ago they made a decision that there wouldn't be there'd be a mix of people making the decision You know, it's not going to be all white people, white men in their 50s. That's not what it's going to be. 
Yeah, there's diversity that exists. Well, at least I hope there is. I've heard some stuff in documentary stuff where it's like, you know, over the past five years, they've changed to that, but they weren't like that before. I can totally understand that. That's why a lot of black artists weren't able to like grab Grammys and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, which makes sense. Uh, But uh, even then it wasn't like they're winning a whole bunch because again, it seems more or less it's based on money and what they're gauging, what artists are trying to push, what albums they're trying to push. That's who wins, you know? Uh, And it's usually has to do with the biggest artists that exist because they're attached to the biggest labels. Yeah. You know, like T Swift is, you know, well, she was with uh Big Red Machine, I think, or something like that. But now she's actually with UMG, which, by the way, BTS is also with UMG. Uh, they're Taylor on- Swift cannot sing very well live. Just put it out there. <laughs> well, the, the, <laughs> like B- BTS is under Big Hit, which is under Hybe, but Hybe is in partnership with UMG. That's how they're able to get on any charts or anything here in the U S is through UMG. UMG is the largest record label in the world. And if you go to UMG site, you'll see BTS on their roster. So it's, um, it's impressive one that they would be on that roster at all, you know, Mm. but, uh, yeah, they sell really well. They do the English versions of the songs, which guys, he said in the video that it worried some people don't worry about that. They're not going to just do English songs from now on. They don't speak English. (laughs) So it's going to be difficult. The only person who could really do that would be RM like could do that easier. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to, they're just trying to reach as many people and touch as many lives because let's be honest. I've been watching Japanese anime, uh, Chinese movie, uh, like, like my favorite movie from China was drunken monkey with Jackie Chan. <laughs> I love that movie so much and watched it so much as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I hated dubs because it was always people doing the worst accents, especially in the eighties and nineties. Like people made fun of it in comedy for a long time. No, what are you saying? Yeah. Yeah, That (laughs) dumb stuff. I couldn't stand that stuff. So I'd always watch in the natural language and read the subtitles. Yeah. A lot of people do not read subtitles. I mean, a lot of people do not read it. It's because you can't watch the movie and be on your phone. That's why. Huh? Because you have to read, you have to pay attention. That's why they don't like reading subtitles. What what would that have to do with their phone? Because if you're looking at the phone, you miss the subtitles. They don't know what the hell he said. Oh yeah, in this day and age, people yeah. looking at their phone while they're watching TV. Yeah, yeah okay, you can't that multitask makes sense. with subtitles. Yeah, well, those are useless, ADD ridden people. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why. But, yeah. So I mean, like, like I love watching, like again, Ip Man, Ip Man Two. Like I loved watching those. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, but I liked one and two the best. But they're all good. Yeah, they're all good. Three got a little weird. Four got oh, away Tyson. from us. Right, three, three was Tyson. Tyson and four, four was, was like, Lee. he somehow only aged three years and 20 years. <laughs> that was like weird. Yeah. Like he had just like some gray hairs. Yeah. Like that's all it was. <laughs> but he still looked exactly the same. I'm like, this dude does not age. It is 1950 something. The first one was 1920. <laughs> this dude does not age at all. Uh, but yeah. Um, no, I, I watch a lot of Japanese anime too. Like, uh, uh, well, of course, like Full Metal Alchemist, the original stuff. And I don't really like too many dubs. The only dubs I like are like the crew that did Full Metal Alchemist. I like those actors because they know how to speak and they know how to match the mouth where it doesn't mm-hmm. look so ominous and fake. Yeah. Anyways, we're going on a tangent. But uh, yeah, no, don't don't worry about BTS. They're, I promise you they're not going to just be doing English tracks for the rest of their lives. They're not doing that. But uh they're gonna, they're probably gonna maybe experiment with a fourth language, you know, and be they quadlingual. Go, be like, uh, quadlingual. How about we learn Spanish and then we'll just go down to the dude? They would kill in that market. Man. They would kill. I mean, J Balvin does amazing, so they would they would definitely do really well in that market. Oh, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm now I'm really curious. Somebody's looking it up right now. Like, actually, I think they. <laughs> I mean, that would be a really good market. I mean, would they, would they do anything in the Chinese market? Would like, is, I, I don't know. I know 
there's been wars at one point in time and mm-hmm. issues, but I'm just curious if like they could actually expand into that market. Would that be okay? And would they be successful? Do you think? I don't see why not. Yeah. I don't see why not either. Why not? <laughs> Their music is very universally loved and they yeah. can tweak and alter things mm-hmm. in different genres and play with things. Like that's what impressed me the most mm-hmm. when I first heard dynamite. Yeah. Like that's what impressed me the most was that it was so much stuff packed in that it was just like, Hey, guess what? You're going to have a little bit of nineties, a little bit of R and B, a little bit of disco, a little bit of the soul, a little <laughs> bit of this. I'm like, how are you doing this? <laughs> I'm <am> so confused. <laughs> <laughs> and like a bunch of their songs are like that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, we have a list of stuff that we're doing like, okay, so yeah. we're going to be releasing uh, us watching them speak at the UN uh, uh, UNICEF or UN. I can't remember. I think it was UN. I don't remember UN. which one we have though. I don't remember which one we have. I think it's the UN, but it could be the UNICEF one. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing uh, a a bunch of people had requested like the short little mashup uh, tour thing. I can't remember what it's called now. (laughs) Yeah, I don't remember. I'm more so laughing at the face you made. (laughs) Probably a creepy looking face. (laughs) Yeah, I assume. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're creepy, Joel. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but, uh, (laughs) yeah. So, I mean, oh, what's the other thing we're doing? Oh, we're doing something else. We're all okay. I think you said XG. Yeah. We're doing an XG one. I think, no, we're doing. And then you said left and right. That sounds right. Left and right is one. And then we're doing one from XO. And then we've got one thing I want you guys to actually watch though, is I want you to watch, uh, the one we're doing on marketing because we're going to have like, we're going to talk about, cause we're both in marketing. So we're going to talk about like the bad things that exist in marketing because a lot of people, even though you may know what it is, you're still not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, Hey, a plus B equals C. Well, maybe it'll equal D. No, it equals C. <laughs> maybe it'll equal D. No, it's going to equal C. Well, I'm still going to try and see if it equals D. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still making C, Dick. Yeah. But um, so we're going to be talking about marketing, like the bad forms of marketing that exist that are still successful. And then, of course, the good forms of marketing, which a prime example for good forms of marketing is BTS, which we will go in depth on how they're really creating this universe. And it's in part close to the army and fandom, you guys. Like you're in part what helps them actually be able to reach what they're doing because they do a lot of work on their own. Don't get me wrong. They do a crap ton of work. But then you guys, almost like you're doing a mirror challenge or a shadow challenge <laughs> of let's see how much marketing we can do for them too. You yeah. Know? yeah. Which is really super cool. But uh, yeah, man, there's so much to unpack there. And I wish I could remember it all. And we used to stop videos and do this, but we don't have OBS software. So we're already having to contend with commercials popping up <laughs> in this dumb thing. So yeah, like six. unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. uh, I so will guys. say it was, it was cool to see uh, just their evolution. Can remember oh, how yeah. we were talking about that in some of the videos and just seeing yeah. how they changed the images, not just uh, musically, but just the parents as well. Just completely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's good to evolve. You know, it's not just the depth of who you are as an artist or the depth of your personality or the depth of your environment or how you evolve over time, but it's, um, it's just their, their evolution of their maturity. Mm -hmm. You know, when at beginning you're that punk rock life, that, that aggressiveness, (laughs) yeah, right. You just, you just want to, you know, mess with some stuff and do Mm -hmm. some stuff and you just want to just see what you can get away with, see what you can do, see what you can try and experiment with. And as you get older, especially when you feel more of that responsibility on yourself, if you don't just break apart, fall down and, you know, go to drugs or alcohol or whatever else. But if you look towards that more enlightened path, then you'll see your evolution changes over time. It's kind mm-hmm. of like when you have kids, 
you kind of don't want to be a douchebag anymore. You know, if yeah. you were a douchebag and you had kids, you'd be like, oh, I can't be a douchebag no more yeah. because I can't my teach kid him will to become do a douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my kid to become a douchebag. <laughs> but, it's, but it's that self thing that you, not just self-love, but your evolution of your mind, your thought process, and your perception. You shift that perception into something different, into something more. So it's kind of impressive in a lot of ways. So, I, I, you know, we're going to see what happens and whatnot. We'll see what happens. Spanish album coming soon. Yeah, right. Dude, that'd be dope. <laughs> Dude, I'd, I'd be really curious. I'd be really curious what that would sound like. Whoa. Oh. They got plenty of people to choose from to well, uh, collab well, with. Right now, though, I think that said 2023 update. I don't think that was 2023 update because they're in service now. They're not going to make an album for a while or do a tour for a while. Mm-hmm. I know they still play a sh- an occasional show when they get a break or whatnot. But, yeah, they're in ser- military service right now. Yeah. And if I can be honest, things can change in military service. So true, too. Let's hope they stick with it and keep going because a lot of them end up going on permanent hiatus or a few of them, not all of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, man, I really enjoyed that. Rice Squad, you did a great job, bud. Did a really good job. It was very informative, very intuitive. The controls on it, I will say that. (laughs) But uh, and good motion graphics, bud. Proud of you. It's awesome. But yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're (laughs) doing way better than we are. I mean, we're new, but still. But uh, yeah, I like the uh, I like the video. Good at it, fulfilling. <laughs> That's such a goofy face. I'm sorry. Don't you forget to like and things. subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when new things are coming on. Uh, hit links in descriptions. Check out stuff. I think eventually we're going to be doing the fourth wall uh, membership thing. So we'll send the link to you guys or whatever i don't know we'll just put it up on some videos (laughs) (laughs) we'll put it up on some videos you can check it out and do what it is you do now anyways okay i'll talk to you guys later (laughs) have a good day h you got anything to say peace (laughs) peace